Joshua and Messiah for allowing me another opportunity to come and learn something about who he is and, and how he's operating. And to be the will of Joshua is just to use me as a vessel to share anything uh, about this great gospel. Mm -hmm. So I want to just uh, continue on and talk about the topic, the true meaning of abortion. And I, I want to get like Matthew, the 13th chapter. Because the first speaker went over some really important principles, how is the doctrine or the teaching of um, the Roman Catholic Church and various other religions see, that is preventing the rebirth of a soul and that they are cutting off see, mankind from being spiritually reborn see, by the doctrine or in essence performing a spiritual abortion. And actually before we get that, I got a couple handouts I wanted to go over and uh, one of the handouts, it talks about um, a, uh, abortions. They have like one side the pro and one side is the cons. And then if we can just read just a couple of those um, because it takes the natural see, to understand the spiritual. So Yahweh Elohim, as we say about the first speaker, he said, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. So Yahweh, our Creator, hasn't left us without a way to come and know something about who He is and how He's operating. Say the natural things point to the spiritual things. So you have a natural birth pointing to a spiritual birth, you see. And you have this natural abortion which is cutting off or preventing the new creature from coming forward or pre preventing the seed from coming into fruition or being born, you see. And so we're looking at the natural to point to the spiritual. Um, so that it's really a controversial topic. And so um, there's some pros and cons according to man, but we're wanting to look at or extract the spiritual principles of that. So if we can just read a little bit of the pro, I think it's from abortionprocon.org or something like that. This one here? Uh, no, it's a, a, not that one. That's from the uh, other uh, That one? No, that's uh, not a textbook. Hand. But it talks about the pros and cons. They, some of them say conception begins, you know, life begins at conception. And then there is another one that talks about. We don't have um, that. Okay, so uh, maybe I don't have that one. So um, I'll go on. So there's two. Uh, pros and cons about you know abortion. There is pro-choice, mm -hmm. you know those that you know support um, you know your right, right to choose, and there is pro-life. Those that says mm -hmm. that right. there is a list of things that categorize life, and, mm -hmm. and they say life begins at conception. Mm -hmm. So we're not on either side of the thing. See, we're talking about the spiritual reality of the thing. See? Because um, there was one that you know, Dr. Kelly talked about individuals being concerned with the civil rights and worrying about what's IDMR, a civil rights organization. He said, I am not concerned right. with your civil rights. You I am go. concerned with the devil trying to deprive you I'm of your so divine right. or spiritual there you go. Yes. And so that's what we're down here to understand more about the spiritual side of things. So we that's can be right. born again after the spirit. See? There you go. And not have the satanic spirit, what? Cut us off or prevent right. our soul, see, from being reborn. So if we can just, let's get Matthew the 13th chapter. We'll get Matthew and we'll continue on. So we know that our Creator, see, when we come down here, we find out our Creator is, is a pattern. You know, He is threefold. He is a unity. He is the Father, represented by this orange cloud, see, in His pure spirit or abstract state. See, He is without uh, any discernible or descriptive shape and form. See, we cannot know anything about Yahweh in His pure spirit state. And what he did, see, he showed Moses and 70 uh, elders, see, and Aaron, David, Abin, and Bayou, uh, his super incorporeal shape and form of a man. Now, this is Yahweh Elohim, who uh, the word, see, is called the word or son, see, the creator, taking on shape and form in part, see, doesn't take all the creator to take on shape and form, see, and then manifest himself in a physical body as Joshua the Messiah. 
So our creator is proven that he is threefold. He is a threefold unity, see. He is not a trinity. Trinity, he exists as the Father, pure spirit, without shape and form, uh, composed of, he is, he does not possess these nine divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength, see. And they take, and they took on shape and form, see. Now this is the word of son, or Elohim, who is the archetype or the original pattern of the universe, see. All things are patterned after him, see, and that this spirit manifested in the flesh, okay? So you have this threefold unity. So when you have men and women, see, coming together, see, in physical union, that is a reflective or pointing to, see, the threefoldness of the Father, because when men and women come together, those sexual secretions, see, because of that fertilized egg, see, form a cloud-like, see, that gray and white substance, see, that forms when the, a man and a woman, they come together and they conceive, and then, see, the, when the sperm, see, comes up, see, fertilizes the ovum, it starts to do what? Come down and take on shape and form, see, and after some 40 weeks, see, the child or the physical baby is manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's a threefold C unity, showing that the Creator yes. C right. has patterned all things mm -hmm. after Himself. Right. We did find the literature on pro and con. Okay, so uh, why don't we? Uh, we'll see, let's just get a couple of them since you found that. Yeah. Okay. Here are the pros and cons mm -hmm. of abortion. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Procon.org. Mm -hmm. Pro number one, the U.S. Supreme Court has declared abortion to be a fundamental right guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. Constitution. That's one of the pros. Continue on. Pro number two, reproductive choice empowers women by giving them control over their own bodies. Okay. Pro number three, fetuses are incapable of feeling pain when most abortions are performed. Okay. Here are some cons. Con number one, <laughs> abortion <laughs> is murder. Con number two, life begins at conception. Okay. So unborn babies are human beings with the right to life. Okay. And con number three, <clears throat> abortion is the killing of a human being, which defies the word of God. So they give some scriptures. So they're laying out the pros and cons of two various organizations, mm -hmm. see. And again, we're looking at the spiritual reality of what abortion really is. Do not, you know, jump into the middle of argument, see, of mankind. But what does it point to spiritually and psychologically? Mm -hmm. And so I, there's another article that talks about spiritual abortion. It's from the website. And the, the guy made some, some pretty interesting points because I wasn't... I wasn't, you know, sure that I would find anything out there in my research on the topic. Um, but there are, there are people out there that are trying to extract the spiritual principles. Mm -hmm. And so if we can read just, it's a little, like, a pair of, you yeah, know, we got it. around that. And if we can read where it's from. This is from uh, Isaiah 58. This organization. Uh, Isaiah 58 broadcast. Okay. Contracts. Spirit of abortion. Okay. It says Christianity itself is most guilty of the sin of abortion. Abortions of unborn children of God. Mm -hmm. It is evil for Christian ministers to persuade people who are hungering for God that they have been born again before they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So now his his issue with Christianity mm -hmm. is saying that they're convincing people they've been born again without this baptism mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. So he has like a different twist on it, but yet he's still calling them, continue on. If those souls receive that lie about the new birth and stop pursuing righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, they will have been aborted. Stop right there. He said if they really receive the lie, of Christianity, those souls have been aborted. 
Right. So he's yeah. looking at, trying yeah. to look at those natural mm -hmm. things right. and see how yeah. it's pointing to yeah. spiritual things mm -hmm. under this Christian doctrine. Yeah. Is there yeah. any more to that? They will have been aborted, mm -hmm. for their growth in the womb toward the new birth will have been interrupted. Okay. So the growth in the room that is interrupted is called an abortion. So he's looking at it, kind of trying to see the spiritual reality of that. He says Christianity. And so, it's, you know, when we come down here, it's, this is a school of metaphysical research. We're looking beyond the physical. It's not anything against uh, Christianity or the Roman Catholics or uh, 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 Muslims and other religious groups. It is the doctrine, see. It is the doctrine that distinguishes us, see. Because we're looking at things how Yahweh laid them out according to the scriptures and according to this divine pattern, see, that the natural things point to the spiritual things. And there is no salvation, as was said by the first speaker, in any works. So, um, Joshua nailed those things to the cross, see. Uh, you can't uh, get water baptized and have favor with God. You can't get baptized or eat the Passover and have favor with God. That's right. Keeping the Ten Commandments, see, is not going to give us favor with yeah. God. Doing a bunch of good deeds for mankind does not give us favor, see. We have to be converted, see. We have to be born again anew in Yahshua the Messiah. Yahshua said those things were nailed to the cross. So if there are any organization, see, that says you got to work upon something to do something mm -hmm. to be right with God, that's not true. Mm -hmm. See, that's the difference, see. So if we can get Matthew the 8th, start at 8, 13 and 8. Matthew 13 and 8. So we want to talk about, um, you know, when we come into this teaching, it says uh, more of a brother. And let's get 15, 1 first, first Corinthians 15 and 1. He's, you know, talking about declaring unto you the gospel. So we're declaring Yahshua the Messiah unto you, how he died, how he was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures, see. So this is the gospel, or the good news, or the glad tidings of Yahshua the Messiah, see, that can convert a soul and bring forth life or a new creature in him, see. So that's what we're coming down here for, see, to be converted, see, to be born again in Yahshua the Messiah. So let's get 1 Corinthians and Matthew 13. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, mm -hmm. brethren, I declare unto you the glad tidings mm -hmm. which I preached unto you, mm -hmm. which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, mm -hmm. for which also you are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Now that Yahshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay, so that's how Yahshua did this, according to the pattern, which is himself, see. He was buried, see, in Joseph's new tomb. He resurrected the third day, see. He is the seed of the first fruits of them that slept from the dead. Yes. So that's Yahshua the Messiah. And we go over to 8, Roman, uh, Matthew the 13, 8th verse, it talks about the seed. So the seed is planted in the woman, see, naturally so. Takes on shape and form, see, after there is a conception. And then 40 weeks later, there is a physical, see, manifestation, or that seed, see, is bought forth into fruition. So those things are operating according to the pattern. So we want to look at what is the true seed to you that's being laid in the soul or laid in the heart and mind of mankind. Matthew 13 and 8. But others fell into good ground. Oh, that's the parable of the sower. So if we could start up a little bit, it talks about the parable of the sower. Yes. And Yahshua and Messiah is explaining this to his disciples. See, because the devil is against what spiritual rebirth there you go. maybe we can get how in exodus he tried to keep uh the boy babies we have time for being born mm -hmm. i'll start at two <laughs> and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying 
Behold, a sower went forth to sow a seed. Mm -hmm. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured them. Mm -hmm. Some fell upon stony places, mm -hmm. where they had not much earth. Mm -hmm. And for rift they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. Mm -hmm. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. Mm -hmm. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up with it and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Okay, before we go further, so this is an explanation of the sower and the seed. And he says some fell on good ground. So we know from the story that Adam's seed, we're from, made from what? The dust of the earth seed. Right. Or the ground. Yahweh made him seed. He shaped and formed him. And then he breathed in his natural the breath of life. The man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. You have the principle of a death and a burial and a resurrection, see. Yahweh Elohim, see, he made us from the what? Dust of the earth. Okay. So you have the seed being uh, falling on good ground. Okay, continue on. And brought forth fruit. So there is fruit that's being brought forth from seed that is falling on good ground. See. Continue right. on. Some a hundredfold, mm -hmm. some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So in the natural, you have a seed that's planted in the earth. There is a burial, and there is a resurrection, and a fruition. So that seed is multiplying, see, that which is brought forth, or fruit. Just like the seed of Abraham went down into Egypt and did what? Multiply. Right. Yahweh brought them out and gave them, see, a land flowing with milk and honey. Or the seed came into fruition. But out here, see, there was some that did what? Die off. And the new creature went over and inherited the promise. Okay, continue on. Who had ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, now go down where Yahshua talks about the meaning of it. parable. Hear the meaning of the parable or the sower. This is 13. Mm -hmm. Therefore speak I to them in parables, mm -hmm. because looking they see not, and listening they hear not, mm -hmm. and neither do they understand. Mm -hmm. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which said, mm -hmm. By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and mm -hmm. shall not perceive. Mm -hmm. For this people's heart is waxed gross, mm -hmm. and their ears are dull of hearing, mm -hmm. and their eyes are closed, lest at any time they should he see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and mm -hmm. should be converted, and should be healed. Which is the goal, to be converted, to see spiritually mm -hmm. so, and hear spiritually mm -hmm. so, and have the veil move back, so that our hearts can be converted, and we can be born again in Joshua. Okay, continue on. We drop down to 18. Mm -hmm. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. So if anyone hear the word, or the true gospel, mm -hmm. see, the wicked one is a satanic spirit. See, mm -hmm. that comes and takes it away. You don't need to go down there. They don't know what they're talking about. That ain't the true name. There's nothing wrong with Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, you ought to leave them folks alone. There Continue you go. on. <laughs> this is he which receives seed by the wayside. But the seed that fell into stony places mm -hmm. is the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. So there are some that hear the word mm -hmm. and have joy and gladness. Yeah. yeah. Continue on. Yet, yet hath he not root in himself. Mm -hmm. But endure for a while. Okay, so come around for a little while, see. For when, yeah, what? Fall away. Yeah. Continue on. For when a tribulation or persecution arises mm -hmm. because of the word, mm -hmm. by and by he is offended. Mm -hmm. So therefore, hey, look, there's some tribulation, there's some persecution. Why are you doing that? That's against everything else. It is a cult, see. I'm going to go ahead and leave them. Continue on. The seed that fell among the thorns mm -hmm. is as he that hears the word of Yahweh and mm -hmm. the care of this age. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Okay, so there are things in the natural we just want to get, we don't want to let go of. 
you know, everybody celebrates the holidays. Right. What's wrong with you? Right. See, there's things that go on in the world that mm -hmm. the world want to have you uh, maybe uh, advance yourself mm -hmm. in your work. You know, have a great career. Mm -hmm. See, have a better life. See, mm -hmm. the cares of this world, okay, draw you away. Mm -hmm. See, you on. But the seed that fell into the good ground mm -hmm. is as he that heareth the word yes. and understandeth it, which also bears fruit and bring forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Okay, so the seed that falls within the good ground, see, yes. bearing forth fruit, or what? Being born again, see, right. bearing yeah. forth what? The fruits of the Spirit. There so you one go. in Galatians 5.19. Also, so there is the natural seed, see, that brings forth, see, a fruition, see, or offsprings in the spirit, in that the natural seed that's not aborted, see, is comes forth in the life and ascends throughout the life, see. There's a natural, see, pointing to the spiritual. We're coming down here, see, we want to have Yahshua and Messiah resurrected in us. So we can bring forth what? The fruits of the Spirit, see? Those things, see, of Him, not ourselves, see? Because we can't do anything of ourselves. Um, but let's get the fruits of the Spirit. And then we also I have down to, in Egypt when you talk about the midwives. Yeah, I want to, I want, before you get back, then get Exodus. I want to get Exodus 1 and 22. I also want to get it when Yahshua the Messiah had the death decree on him. And Matthew, the tw second chapter, I think it's Matthew 2.16. And then I also want to hold 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Because we're talking about a new creature coming forward that's not aborted, see, by these spiritual abortionists. I think that's in one of the handouts uh, talking about the spiritual abortionists. Um, and if we have time, we can get that. Exodus 1 and 22. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born shall cast into the river. So hold that. He put out this death decree and let's get Revelation 12, 4 through 5. So Pharaoh, see, they want to deal evilly with the children of Israel in Egypt because they're multiplying, see, exceedingly, and they want to make sure that they don't overtake them. Mm -hmm. So he puts out a death decree and he tells the midwives, see, mm -hmm. to uh, kill off, see. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. continue on. Revelation 12, 4 through 5. Well, hold that. Let's get a little bit more of the Exodus because this same thing is playing out when Yahshua the Messiah, when he's born into the world. But see, he said, as the first speaker said, think not he come to destroy the law and the prophet. He's coming to fulfill. So the same circumstances that was present back there was also present when Yahshua the Messiah came into the world. So he's fulfilling that which is instituted. But really, you're looking at two mysteries, see. The mystery, see, of Yahweh, the mystery of righteousness, yeah. and the mystery of unrighteousness. Because everything Yahweh said he will do, he said, look, be fruitful and multiply. The devil say, I'm going to cut you off. Uh. I'm going to restrict, restrict your growth, mm -hmm. see. Restrict your birth, mm -hmm. see. And these natural things are pointing to those spiritual principles, mm -hmm. see. Joshua wants, see, us to receive good uh, seed and good ground, see, mm -hmm. and be shaped and formed in his likeness mm -hmm. and in his image, see, right. and be resurrected or converted in him and bring forth fruit. Right. Now, the devil is against that. Totally. Okay, so continue on. Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river. And every daughter you shall save alive. Mm -hmm. So now the male he has a problem with, see, typifying Yahshua the Messiah, see, because it says thy maker is our husband. Right, see? Yeah. He's yeah. the man, mm -hmm. the creation is the offspring or the one. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Continue yeah. on. And so the women they feared Yahweh, see. They did not do as what Pharaoh said. Right. They saved those babies mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. I'll go back up to 17. Mm -hmm. says, but the midwives feared Elohim and did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but save the men, the men, children alive. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Let's get um, Matthew and then Revelation. Because these principles are repeating themselves over and over and over again. Right. 
see, you have this prevention of a new creature from coming forward, and that's, right. see, the killing off of the newborn, see, mm -hmm. or the prevention of the seed from coming into fruition. Matthew 2 and 17. Mm -hmm. Then was fulfilled that then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentations and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, mm -hmm. and would not be comforted, because they are no more. So that's in Jeremiah, the prophets, or they kill these children two and under. Mm -hmm. See, let's, let's go up, I think it might be 213, where Pharaoh, um, he sent the wise man out. He said, look, go find, you know, the king of the Hebrews, essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, his, he had uh, some deception in his heart that he wanted the, to kill off the righteous birth of the Messiah, which is how Dr. Kenley put it in the, the righteous birthing of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So there's some deception in his part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Herod, when he saw, when he saw that he was mocked by Maja, was exceedingly wroth and mm -hmm. set forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under mm -hmm. according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the Maja. Mm -hmm. Well, when Pharaoh, oh, yeah, that's it. That's fine. So they killed all the kids two and under, see, but not Yahshua the Messiah because um, Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream. He said, look, take the baby and what? flee into Egypt, see, right. and later on he said, now you can come out, which he's fulfilling that, because Yahweh brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, because he said, out of Egypt mm -hmm. have I called my son. Right. So yeah. as long as Yahweh is working with you, it doesn't matter what the Pharaohs or the Herods of the world say mm -hmm. unto you, Hallelujah. see, there is salvation, see, or an escape of death. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get Revelation 12.45. So this satanic spirit, see, is the culprit. This is Satan who was cast out of heaven. He has said there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought. And he was cast out into this physical creation. And see, his place was found no more in heaven. See? Right. And he's down here, see, full of lies, see. Mm -hmm. Trying to deceive or prevent, see, or trying to have you have a spiritual abortion. See? Yeah trying to prevent Yahshua the Messiah from being born in you or being resurrected in you. And once Yahshua has been resurrected, there is no going back. Right. See, there is no going back, see, once he's been resurrected, see, in you. See, now you are clothed in the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get that. Revelation 12, 4, and 5. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. So we're talking about the tail, this this war between the uh, evil satanic spirit and Yahshua and his angels. And he said his tail. So now it's not the T-A-L-E uh -huh. it is a T-A-L I'm sorry, it's not the T-A-I-L, right. it's the T-A-L-E. So what do we mean by that? That's the lie. Mm -hmm. See, he has a lie. Yahweh said, let all the angels worship him. Mm -hmm. See, and Satan, see, wants to be like the Most High. Mm -hmm. He wants to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. If someone can get uh, Isaiah 14, so he's sowing a lie, see. He's sowing a seed of deception, mm -hmm. and he's going to cause one-third of the angelic host, see, to be... Uh, Expelled, see, lose their spiritual state. And it's self same way he lied to Eve, and he's still carrying this lie all the way down through the ages and dispensations. See, whatever thus saith Yahweh, he says the opposite. Mm -hmm. You need to be water baptized. See, mm -hmm. that's a lie according to Yahweh. See, he said you're saved by grace through faith mm -hmm. and not of works. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue on. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So John, see, bearing witness, see, to the same vision, he's seeing a vision, see, the dragon, the devil, serpent, see, standing before the woman, see, trying to devour the child, see, with that death decree, same thing here with Yahshua the Messiah, see, continue on. 
and she brought forth a man child who mm -hmm. was to rule all nations mm -hmm. with a rod of iron mm -hmm. and her child was caught up into Elohim mm -hmm. and to a throne okay okay so I, we can stop there I also want to get and I want to go back to the uh, volume 3 mm -hmm. and I want to get where page 31 it says it talks about uh, the abortion is usually placed in a situation. That's down by the third paragraph mm -hmm. where he talks about in the, in the textbook about the abortion. And so he talked about how the Roman Catholic Church, for those you know who agree to raise their child in that faith, he's reaching back to the unborn child mm -hmm. to, and causing a spiritual abortion before it's even formed in the womb because that child has no chance of what? spiritual rebirth right. by believing yes. the damnable doctrine of the church. Right. So he goes on to say, now let's talk about the abortions. Page 31, mm -hmm. Elohim book, God 3. Mm -hmm. The abortionist is usually placed in the situation of trying to help a distraught wife, often accompanied by her husband, who just feels that she cannot bear the economic strain of another child, mm -hmm. or a pregnant, unwed female who faces the stigma of social ostracism, or a female victim of a rapist, or other situation which plays on the sympathies of the abortionist. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will agree that a lot of times the abortionist is after the large fee that he collects, mm -hmm. but he would not have, a, have any business if the above mentioned pathetic situations were not presented. Mm -hmm. Hence, the abortionist, in many instances, is rendering a service to the public as is being acknowledged by the increasing number of states that are enacting laws permitting abortions under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. but, what up, but what service to mankind is the Pope of Rome rendering and aborting the spiritual rebirth. So just read that one part again. What service mm -hmm. is the Pope of Rome for any minister, any pastor, see, rendering? See. But what service to mankind is the Pope of Rome rendering and aborting the spiritual rebirth of so many millions of people with diabolical doctrines. Mm -hmm. okay. It is the diabolical doctrine wow. that's causing spiritual abortion, mm -hmm. preventing that new creature from coming forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Continue on. If the abortionist, if the abortionist deserves to be thrown into jail, what about the Pope of Rome? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's get. I want to get Matthew, uh, Romans five and twelve. And I also want to get James 1.18 and Galatians 4.19. Because there's a physical birth, and in the physical birth, there is a uh, death or blood principle. There is a show of water, and then there is spirit. So that occurs in the spiritual birth. And it talks about it. It's laid down really beautiful. And let's, if we can read how Dr. Kelly puts it in a paper, that we have all been, uh, we have all died, see, under the transgression of Adam, and we are in need of a spiritual evil. Oh, okay. uh, let me just see that somewhere in here. But go ahead and read the first one then. Romans 5 and um, 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, Mm -hmm. So then death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Mm -hmm. For unto the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned at the similitude of Adam's transgression. So there is a death, spiritually so, when they disobeyed the commandment of Yahweh. It said death reigned from Adam mm -hmm. to Moses. And we know it wasn't physical because the angel drove them from the garden. So that is a spiritual death that has came down, see, through the ages in dispensation. But that is going to be reversed by Yahshua the Messiah. So there is a death or a blood principle. Okay. 
Um, who was the figure of him that was the con? Okay, continue on to the next scripture, and I'm still looking um, for where it says. You asked for something in Isaiah. And you want to Corinthians, um, the second yes. chapter. Okay. You want to bring Second Corinthians five and seventeen. Yeah, let's get that. So we have this death coming down. See, there's going to be a burial or a washing of regeneration because there is blood and there is water and there is spirit in the physical and there is blood and water and spirit necessitated or needed, see, after the spirit, see. Because Yahshua said, then you are clean through the word, all that, uh, you are clean through the word that I have spoken. And in, Yah in Ezekiel, we can get 36 and 25, Ezekiel 36, talking about cleaning up the man, see, from this death-like state, see, from the fall of Adam, see, all the way down, Yahshua the Messiah to come, he's going to put death to death, see, he's going to bring these laws to an end, see, pour out, see, the gift of the Holy Spirit by the preaching of the gospel, now the soul of a man being washed clean in Yahshua the Messiah so that he might be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit, see, and resurrect anew. Mm -hmm. So Yahshua promised that he's going to clean mankind, see. He said, then he would sprinkle clean water. Mm -hmm. Now he's, that's over in the prophet, but we're looking at the spiritual reality of it. He's going, physical water can change hate, malice, and strife. That's right. There's nothing physical water can do to take that out of us. Mm -hmm. We have to be washed by the words or the gospel, see, of Yahshua the Messiah, cleaning up the soul, then what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. So physical things cannot make us change that carnal, hateful state of mind. Mm -hmm. It is only through Yahshua the Messiah, see, being resurrected, see, us being born again, as he told Nicodemus, see, that old stuff got to go. Yeah. Okay, continue on. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Yahshua, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if we're in Yahshua the Messiah, we are a new creature. Just in the self same way as a child is brought forward, it is a new creature. The woman, the old heaven, the old earth is passed away. You see, once the birth comes forward, and even when the children of Israel left Egypt, see, they saw a new heaven and a new earth. See, they weren't back down here anymore. That was passed away. So we're down here to become a new creature, see, in Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. Is there, let's see. I also want to get, was I holding another one? You said something about Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Okay. Say, it is the spirit that quickened Yahshua said, the flesh mm -hmm. profit nothing. The words are spirit and uh, the words are life. And you are clean by the word of Yahshua the Messiah. So he's washing and cleaning. And it's talked about in Ezekiel. See, he's prophesying. See, all of the law and the prophets point to Yahshua the Messiah. 22. Okay. 36. Ezekiel 36 and 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, mm -hmm. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, mm -hmm. I do not this for your sakes, mm -hmm. O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, mm -hmm. whither ye went. Mm -hmm. And I will sanctify my great name, mm -hmm. which is profaned among the heathen, mm -hmm. which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, said mm -hmm. Yahweh Elohim, when I shall be sanctified mm -hmm. you before their eyes. Mm -hmm. And he talked about, then shall I sprinkle clean water. And he's reading it, it gets right to it. Oh, okay. 25. Mm -hmm. then, I will sprinkle, then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, mm -hmm. and ye shall be clean. Mm -hmm. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Mm -hmm. A new heart will I also give you, mm -hmm. and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of the flesh, and I will give you a heart, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Talking about the conversion of the man, the conversion of the soul. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus did not understand that. Mm -hmm. This is Joshua talking about being born from above. There See, mm -hmm. there is water involved, but it's spiritually so. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. not yeah. physically so, but spiritually mm -hmm. being cleaned up in Joshua mm -hmm. and Messiah. Okay. All right, there's another scripture. Let him finish that part. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. 27. 
and I will put my spirit within you mm -hmm. and cause you to walk in my statutes mm -hmm. and ye shall keep my judgments mm -hmm. and do them. Okay. So the man that's been dead till the Yahshua the Messiah comes, he's going to be washed mm -hmm. in the word, see, and then <clears throat> the spirit is going to be placed in him. So that's pointing to blood, water, and spirit. Beautiful. And the self same man where they left Egypt by the lamb, Mm -hmm. Water and spirit. And he came out here to the wilderness of Sinai and he took on shape and form and learned of Yahshua the Messiah, who he is and how he <coughs> wanted to be worshipped. And the new creature, after some 40 year, years out here, went over and received their physical inheritance in Canaan's land as Yahweh had promised. So, um, there's a. Am I holding anything? Okay, no. let's get Galatians 4.19. I think it was John and 1.18. Because Yahshua said, when you see the abomination, the desolation, see, stand in the holy place. So the holy place, according to the pattern, like into this wilderness of Sinai, where you're, what, being shaped and formed in Yahshua the Messiah. So there's a shaping and forming going on out here, see. Galatians, what? Galatians. 4.19. Galatians 4.19. Mm -hmm. My little children. Of whom I travail in birth. Mm -hmm. okay. And so Yahshua will be formed in you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's it. We want Yahshua the Messiah to be formed in us. Right. Right. We want to be converted and resurrected mm -hmm. in Him. Okay. The other scripture, I think it was uh, John, was it Jane, um, James 1 18 through 23, mm -hmm. and then uh, Titus 3 and 5. Um, just get back. We want to. James 118, mm -hmm. of his own will begat mm -hmm. he us with the word of truth, mm -hmm. that we should be a kind of first fruits of the creature. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, mm -hmm. let every man be swift to hear, mm -hmm. slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the Elohim. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, lay upon apart all filthiness and support support for the uh, naughtiness and receive with meekness the ingrated and rapid word which is able to save your souls. Thank you. I probably wrote down the, the wrong scripture but let's get Titus 3 and 5. Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy. So, excuse me, he said not by works of righteousness. Now, works of righteousness. Um, these things, works of righteousness. There isn't anything, I can work in a food pantry, I can pass out food, I can work in a homeless shelter, there you go. and help people that don't have a place to live. These works does not give any man any righteousness. None, there is right. no work of righteousness, work of righteousness. Mm -hmm. There is nothing to do to have favor with God. Hallelujah. See, the devil says you got to do something to be right with him. That's not true. That's right. And it's really, I forgot where it is, which I think Kim talked about. It, it, it takes, you can't take a stick of dynamite to blow that <laughs> stuff out of our heart and out of our mind. We got to do something, something to have favor with Yahweh, to be one with him. Mm -hmm. And if we can hold John 6 and 29. Continue on. But I'm going to start at 4. But mm -hmm. after that, the kindness and love of Yahweh, our Savior, towards man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by, wa by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through our Savior Yahshua the Messiah that being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life thank you say but by his mercy and by his grace or well, by his gift mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit see it said what must man do to work the work John 6 29 I don't want to Messed that up, but was there another one at all before I got that one? Galatians wanted the work 419. Is that uh, did we get Galatians 419? No, you asked for Galatians when they talked about the works of this flesh or something. Oh, 519. Let's hold that. Yeah, uh, but first, I want to get Galatians 615. Galatians 615. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Galatians. 
6 and 15. For, for in the Messiah, Yahshua, neither circumcision availeth anything, mm -hmm. nor uncircumcision. So now there is the Jews, see, it says there is the circumcised, which are the special group, mm -hmm. and uncircumcised, you're over there. There is nothing physical, circumcision, uncircumcision, whether or not you do that in the natural, that still won't change your relationship to your Creator. That's Continue right. on. It says, For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But Yahweh forbid that I should have glory, save in sacrifices of our Savior Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For the, Messi for the Messiah, Yahshua, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon mm -hmm. Israel of Yahweh. Okay, so a new creature. So you are new creatures, see, in Yahshua, old thing, the old way we used to think. The old way we yeah, thought we true. had to live mm -hmm. our lives. The mm -hmm. old way we thought we had some mm -hmm. righteousness with our Creator, mm -hmm. see, or any self righteousness. Right. Because, you know, some folks weren't raised in church, so we thought we had some self righteousness yeah. by mm -hmm. some good deeds that which we did. Mm -hmm. None of that matter. Old things are passed away. Mm -hmm. right. See, you are a new, right. new creature in Yahshua and Messiah. Right. Okay. Was there anything? John 6 29. Mm -hmm. Yahshua answered and said unto them. <laughs> so he said, what must I do? He asked the question of the Messiah. See, how do I get in good with you? I'll go back up to 28. Uh, it says, uh, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works, works of Elohim? Mm -hmm. Yahshua answered and said unto them, this is the work of Elohim, that ye shall believe on him whom he hath sent. So it said, it is the work of Elohim. See, that you believe, see, and he can make you believe, he can yes. make you have faith, see, yes. he can make you, see, be made um, according to his image, see, bringing forth those fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. see. I want to get back to that, because it's the work of Elohim, and I know there is another one that I, I wanted to get, because there's a really a lot of good scriptures about, you know, that newness in Yahshua and Messiah. All right, so if I don't have anything else held... Did you still uh, want Galatians 5.19? I want to hold that one. Okay. And there was a, another handout. Was there another handout I gave you? The devil is a spiritual abortionist. That's in the God the Archetype. And it's like that little mm -hmm. square around it. Got it. Okay, volume, yeah, God the Archetype. Let's Read some more on how the devil try to keep you from being this spiritually born, trying to abort you. This is God's archetype pattern, mm -hmm. page 237. Mm -hmm. Spiritual rebirth is necessary mm -hmm. for one to be a son of Elohim, says yeah, God. That's necessary. Mm -hmm. Necessary. And for Satan. To be a son of Elohim. Okay. And Satan is definitely and positively against this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he lies when he says that he is against birth control. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> for he most assuredly is for the controlling of these rebirths yeah. by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Satan wants birth control more than anything else, for this is the sum total of his existence. That is, to deceive all men who will not believe in our Lord and Savior, Yahshua Messiah. To deceive all men. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Continue on. Furthermore, Satan, in his efforts to thwart a spiritual rebirth, resorts to spiritual criminal abortion to do so. Mm -hmm. See the parable of the sower, where Satan plucks up the seed of the good word, sown in the hearts and minds of men. Therefore, he is the great abortionist in this world. Thank you. So he's the great abortionist yes. in this world. Back Satan. So, okay, I want to just get this before I'm done. This is uh, volume three, and I'll give this to you say, therefore, if we truly believe, and I can give that to the scripture reader. So 
so we're talking about not you know being born again and converted in Yahshua and Messiah mm -hmm. and um, identifying the satanic spirit that wants to have us spiritually aborted <laughs> and not come to know Yahshua coming to uh, peace joy and righteousness in oh, him okay if we truly believe therefore if we truly believe in Yahshua and Messiah that's in volume you three page what's that page 30 page 30 volume 3 Therefore, if we truly believe in Yahshua the Messiah being our Redeemer, according to the scriptures and the divine archetype pattern, mm -hmm. then we are born again in him and have come from death unto life. Mm -hmm. We have thus been born of the blood, the water, and the spirit, all of which was come, which was in him. His precious blood was the atonement for our sins. And we are washed clean with the word. Mm -hmm. And we are quickened by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. unto newness of life and eternal glorification. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So that's what we're down here for. And I want to end on Galatians 5.19. It talks about the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this vision, um, as we look, sometimes we, we may have opportunity to read some of the audio, uh, the transcripts, and listen to the audio tapes, you know. <coughs> we found it that, that, that this preaching of the gospel and the urging and the admonishment for you to come to class is to learn something to rescue your soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Have the soul rescued mm -hmm. eternally right. so from the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So there is the old man. Okay. Let's start with the old man, the works of the flesh, and then, uh, and then 519, the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Galatians 5 and 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, mm -hmm. and the spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary to one to the other. The flesh and the spirit, they're contrary yes. one to the other. Mm -hmm. See, we're coming down to have to try to have a spiritual understanding be converted and that flesh the carnally mind there's always that con that um adversarial relationship what yep. you got to go down there for anyway <laughs> <laughs> you didn't run it they ain't gonna miss you one day won't hurt <laughs> <laughs> you know you're tired yeah. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. so so that ye cannot do the things that you would mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the penal law mm -hmm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, mm -hmm. which are these, mm -hmm. adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, lasciviousness, mm -hmm. idolatry, mm -hmm. witchcraft, mm -hmm. hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, mm -hmm. revelings, mm -hmm. and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hatred, jealousy, envy, look, that stuff is up here. Uh huh. That stuff is up here. That's it fine. has to be taken out by Yahshua and Messiah. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. We can't take it out on no. Our own. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, he has to remove that. That's right. That stuff has to be plucked out. Continue on, and water can't do it. Water can't do it. Mm -hmm. You can get baptized, but still have hatred in your heart. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two. Okay. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no penalty. Mm -hmm. And they that are the messiahs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Mm -hmm. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, mm -hmm. provoking one another, mm -hmm. and envying one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be desirous of those things. We want to bear forth the fruits of the Spirit mm -hmm. to be born in Yahshua Messiah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if anything was gained, all praise, all honor, and glory always go unto Yahshua Messiah, Savior King. Amen. 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 Amen.